today's first video for you is for, with some new stories uh, from Ethiopia and Eritrea. Uh, firstly, a Tigrayan businessman who was abducted in Nairobi, Kenya around four months ago uh, has not been recovered so far. His wife uh, has released a message, an emotional call for uh, the recovery of uh, her husband. The businessman uh, was from Tigray, though he has been in Kenya for years. Uh, second words, Ethiopian government has released a statement about Oromo Liberation Army. Uh, Communication Minister Lagasse Tolu has leveled some allegations against uh, Romia region-based armed group Oromo Liberation Army, OLA. Uh, before these two news stories, we have a new story about an Eritrean journalist. Uh, Daud Isaac is his name. A Swedish television channel just 24 hours ago broadcast a comedy show about this journalist. The journalist has been in prison in Eritrea since 2001. And uh, Swedish channel uh, aired the comedy show to highlight the plight of this Eritrean journalist. But uh, the journalist's daughter has reacted against the portrayal of uh, her father uh, by uh, the host of the comedy show. Who is uh, Daud Isaac? Daud Isaac is uh, a dual national. He had Swedish and Eritrean nationality. In 2001, he was arrested from Asmara, uh, Eritrean capital. In 2001, some opposition politicians, some politicians from Eritrea wrote an open letter to Isaias Averki's government. And they called Isaias's actions uh, as illegal and unconstitutional. They demanded democratic reforms in Eritrea through the letter. The group is called G15 group. What did Eritrean government do? Eritrean government of Asaya Sehverki arrested these G15 members. I think uh, 11 members of G15 were arrested. Journalists, some activists were also arrested. The journalists who covered this latter, this development, they were also arrested. Daud Isaac was arrested in 2001, around 21 years ago. Since then, he has been in prison. Since the Swedish national, that is why Eritrean community in Sweden, it has been calling upon the Swedish government uh, to make efforts for the release of Daud Isaac. Uh, then 24 hours ago, uh, a Swedish news channel uh, SVT uh, aired a comedy show. Name of the show is uh, Siveska Nyheter. Siveska Nyheter. And the show's host was Christopher Applequist. In the comedy show, uh, weekly comedy show, Daud Isaac was shown in a cage. He was making fun of his imprisonment. Obviously, the purpose of the show was to highlight the plight of uh, Isaac uh, Daud Isaac that uh, for more than two decades he's been in prison. And he is uh, Swedish national, but government is not doing enough for his release. But since he was shown in a cage, that is why his daughter reacted against this comedy show. She says that her father's portrayal by this comedy show was racist. Eritrean community in Sweden's reaction has been mixed. Uh, it is uh, appreciating that uh, the Swedish uh, channel is highlighting the plight of uh, the journalist. On the other hand, uh, uh, it is not happy with the way he was shown uh, in a cage. Now, the government, has the Swedish government done enough for the release of uh, Daud Isaac? 
that's the most important question because we know that uh, in 2011 when two Swedish journalists were arrested in Ethiopia Swedish government ensured their release the two were white journalists but now uh, when almost two decades have passed uh, since the imprisonment of Daud Isaac still Swedish government has not opened any investigation into the imprisonment of Daud Isaac. That is why Eritrean community living in Sweden, it has been protesting, it has been urging uh, Swedish government to do more for the release of Daud Isaac. Daud Isaac is still in prison in uh, Eritrea. No signs of any release so far. Uh, no signs of release of other uh, leaders as well who were arrested in 2001 G15 members. Secondly, words, uh, Ethiopian government has released a statement about Oromo Liberation Army. Uh, Lagasse Tolo, who is uh, communication minister of the government, uh, file communication minister, he spoke about Oromo Liberation Army a few hours ago. He said uh, that uh, enforcement of law and order was underway across Ethiopia. Romia regional government forces, Ethiopian federal forces, they were coordinating to clean the areas of Shene, the word used by uh, uh, Mr. Lagasitolo. And he leveled some allegations against Owele. He says that uh, these Shene fighters uh, are involved in robbing, killing, rapes, displacements, and destruction of property. Uh, I am not a defender of Roma Liberation Army, uh, but uh, since I cover their uh, activities, uh, I have not seen rape allegations against Roma Liberation Army. We have seen rape allegations in Tigray, in Amhara uh, regions during Tigray conflict. But we haven't heard uh, OLA fighters or other factions opposing OLA commit rape. We have not seen large-scale rape incidents. Uh, so I don't know why this uh, allegation is being leveled by Lagasse Tolo. And viewers uh, can share with me if they have any information about uh, some large-scale rape incidents in Oromia which were blamed on Oromo Liberation Army. I have not seen that so far. Yes, they have been accused of having uh, killed civilians, displacements are being blamed on them. But I haven't heard about rape allegations. Uh, sexual violence uh, has not been seen in the Oromia uh, in the past uh, few months, like it was seen in Tigray and Amhara regions. Is government successfully containing a Roma Liberation Army? I don't think so. We have not seen any large-scale success from the government in containing a Roma Liberation Army. Instead, OLA is gaining more territories. I've been updating you about West Shiva Zone, which is being stormed by Roma Liberation Army. In South, in Southern Oromia as well, OLA is making territorial gains. So on the ground, there is no such thing that Roma Liberation Army has lost uh, ground. Lastly, viewers, uh, four months ago, I did two videos on the abduction of a Tigrayan businessman in Kenya, in Nairobi, Kenya. Samson Tikle Michael is his name. Uh, he was doing uh, liquefied petroleum business in Kenya, Nairobi. He's been, he's been in, in Kenya for uh, several years uh, and in November he was kidnapped uh, from Nairobi. A video was shared of his kidnapping. I shared the video too. Uh, why was he kidnapped? So far no statement from the government, Kenyan government, Nairobi police. He has not been recovered so far. Perpetrators behind his abduction have not been identified as well. 
we know that he is from Tigray and he was involved in supporting some uh, Ethiopians, Tigrayans displaced uh, into uh, Kenya from Ethiopia. So that is what is being said that his abduction could be linked uh, to his ethnicity, that he is a Tigrayan, that he was helping uh, Tigrayan IDPs, Ethiopian IDPs in Kenya. But he has not been released so far. Kenyan government uh, is not sharing any information about the investigation, about his whereabouts. Ethiopian government has uh, asked the Kenyan government uh, to uh, ensure the recovery of uh, Samson, particularly Michael. His wife has shared a video message, a very emotional, moving video message. Uh, she is calling for the release of her husband, Samson Tekle Michael. Watch the video message of Samson Tekle Michael's wife. Uh, uh, her name is Milan Ms. Gabby. Thank you for watching. It's very difficult. I'm pleading to the Kenya government, the president, Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta. He's a father. Give me a solution for the sake of my children to their mental health. So please, in the name of your children, in the name of God, I'm pleading, I'm kneeling down, I'm begging for justice to be served for my children.